Ooh, what's up you guys welcome back to another top 10 commander video and this time for this video I would like to go over my picks for the 10 best commons for commander before I get into it though I would first like to remind you that most of you who are watching right now are not actually subscribed to the channel so I'd really appreciate it if you took a second to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes and also check out my teespring store if you want to support the channel it's a great way of doing it now for the criteria of this list because this is always kind of a funny thing I'm looking specifically at cards that were originally commons so while they could be upgraded to uncommon I'm looking at cards that were at the very first time printed as common. This list is to really showcase how much power has actually come out of that common rarity. So let's start it off here with number 10, Suture Priest. This is a pretty big one alongside other cards that do similar things. We have Soul Warden, of course. Suture Priest is just a powerful common. It should have been printed at least as an uncommon, I think, for the power that you get here. You gain life easily off of your creatures entering, and whenever your opponent's creatures enter, they lose a life. That is often underestimated because there are so many infinite combo loops that allow your opponents to generate infinite mana off of creatures entering. This shuts that down. This makes it impossible for your opponents to do anything else until they deal with it. So funny enough, that coming from a common is actually really rare. We don't really see that out of the rarity because most commons are just there to have minimal impact. The fact that this can shut down your opponent's games, man, it's just a two-mana creature sitting out there is ridiculous. In the number nine, we have Ponder. We could also include Brainstorm. There are ways of taking advantage of Brainstorm. I lean a little bit closer to Ponder because I think it's easier to fit that into every single deck. And while you can take advantage of Brainstorm and make it busted, we're just looking for a way to alleviate any early game troubles. And Ponder, because it will allow you to shuffle, means that if you're having a bad game, you don't have to see the same deck. If you feel like you're just drawing nothing but non-lands, you're missing your land drops, just shuffle it. So early game, turn one, I've already talked about this being one of the better turn one spells you can play. It's something that's simple, and throughout the game it's still going to be useful. There's never really a turn where I'm like, oh this is bad. Whenever you're able to look three deep, whenever you're able to net yourself a card, for only one blue mana, you're still going to be okay. And then number eight, we have Impact Tremors. Very similar in the spirit of Suture Priest here, we just want to deal a ton of damage. We want our opponents to lose a lot of life. And we do that off of our own creature combos. We do that off of our own mass creature token production. If we're able to create a lot of goblin tokens off of something like Krenko, we'll be able to deal a ton of damage. It's only a two mana common enchantment, which is the most ridiculous thing about this card, is that for only this two mana at the common level, you basically get one half of a Perforos. Perforos is a very popular card in Commander and often a win con in casual EDH. But that's a mythic. That's a mythic god creature. It's an indestructible mythic god creature. You get one half of that at the common level. I don't know what they were thinking at the time because this is arguably better for more competitive decks if you want to have a cheaper card to win with. But again, you have another card that can just change the game entirely. You have a card here at the common level that can just win you the game. And then number seven, we have Capsize. Speaking of cards that could just win you the game, I don't know what it is, but in blue, you can constantly buy it back. That's a headache to have to deal with. I think a lot of people look at this and they assume, wow, six mana just to bounce something back and you get to play it again on a later turn. That's okay. It's a good deal, but is it really that powerful? Well, blue has no problem with getting to infinite mana. And this is one of the ways that you can win once you get infinite mana. You could just bounce everything your opponents control back to their hand because it says permanent. You can bounce all their lands back. Just insane. And then number six, we have Mana Geyser. I can understand why some of these were originally printed as commons because 1v1, Mana Geyser for five mana is really not that great. Whatever mana you net off of this in 1v1 limited or whenever you played this, you might have netted yourself a few extra mana off of this. But in the commander format, when you have three opponents, mid to late game, you can get 20 mana off of this no problem. That's why this card is such a crazy common. That's why this card is so much value at the common level. Because rituals, mana production, you can copy it. You can dump all that mana into a mana sink, into a massive X-costed spell, some sort of win con, and really take advantage of just the fact that this is a multiplayer format. And that's why some of these comments have just grown in power because it's a multiplayer format and their mechanics are busted. Number five here is Lotus Petal. 
Lotus Petal, believe it or not, is a common. And the only downside here compared to the Moxin, compared to any sort of zero mana mana rock, is that it does sacrifice itself, but you will end up with whatever color mana that you need. And there are a ton of decks that can take advantage of zero cost artifacts that sacrifice themselves. I'm looking at you, Teshar, Ancestors Apostle. And constantly being able to replay it means that you have some sort of infinite mana loop. You have your creatures that can bring back artifacts to your hand. And whenever you cast a zero mana mana rock, that just triggers something else entirely. So you'll have Joyra Weatherlight Captain that will give you a ton of card draw for playing something like this. Oh, in addition to the fact that it's still a good card, even if you don't have a way to loop it. I mean, every competitive EDH deck seems to play it. Anytime turn one, you can end up with more mana. Anytime you can play a zero-costed mana rock, you're going to be looking to win. And then number four, we have Mystic Remora. Another card. Can you believe it's a common? But this common from Ice Age, for the longest time, it was one of the most underrated blue cards. And now I think everybody respects it. Everybody recognizes its power. Even if it does have that cumulative upkeep, you pay that cumulative upkeep a couple times, over the course of those two or three turns that you leave it out there, your opponents are going to be forced to cast something. They're not paying that mana. The tax that you might pay for something else, it's cheaper. It's cheaper than this. You have to pay four mana to keep them from drawing a card. You're not going to do that. So blue has a lot of ways of drawing cards. I mean, we talked about Ponder already. This just sits out there. And for only one blue mana, the power here is ridiculous. Number three is Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Another card that benefits significantly from the shift to multiplayer. Because it says each opponent, it's pretty much a win con at the common level. You just have to have enough of a setup, you just have to have enough black devotion. And even if it doesn't outright kill your opponents, you've pretty much recovered. You've fully recovered. If you're not taking them out of the game, you've just gained a ton of life yourself. Because you do gain life equal to the total life lost. It did get an upgrade to the uncommon rarity in Theros Beyond Death, but let's be honest, that's what it probably should have been to begin with, arguably even a rare. You can bring it back from the graveyard, have it re-enter, you can blink it of course. There are just so many ways of taking advantage of good ETBs in the commander format. And then number two, we have Ristic Study. So we just talked about how powerful Mystic Grimora is at the common level. Ristic Study is a common from Prophecy. It did get an upgrade to rare rarity, in Jumpstart, so that should be a pretty good indicator of just how powerful this card is as being just a common. It has been one of the most sought after blue cards because, like Mystic Remora, it just sits out there. Huge upside here is that you don't have a cumulative upkeep. Every single spell they play, they have to pay a tax or they let you draw a card. It just controls the whole game. There's not a thing that they do where they're not thinking about Ristic Study and whether or not they want to play around it. I think most people kind of fool themselves into thinking this is all about card draw, when in reality it's about slowing down the game. If you get card draw, then great. Your opponents might be playing recklessly, but this is really about making certain players play slowly. And if they're concerned with you drawing cards, they're going to be paying a little bit more mana over the course of the game. It's all about taxes. So before I go on to number one, let's talk about some honorable mentions. I love Cultivate, I love Kodama's Reach, I think these are just great commons, but compared to the power that we've seen here, they just didn't break into the top 10. And then we have cards like Counterspell that were not originally commons, but were then printed later on as commons. Again, to reiterate my criteria, this was about showcasing the power from cards that were originally printed as commons. We have Terminate, great kill spell. We have Sakura Tribe Elder, again, I love this kind of rampant green. Ramping on turn two seems to be the standard that cards like this set. Quisali Pride Mage is on an older list I did, an older video. I still love it, I still think it's a great card, but it doesn't see widespread play anymore. Pyroblast is another great common. Definitely sees play in more competitive decks. If you're able to stop blue, that's usually pretty good. And we also have Priest of Titania, very close to making this list, and honestly could have, I think. Just a crazy good card. I mean, a lot of decks play elves, and it's one of the better mana dorks that you can combo with. But number one here, number one is probably the best common. We're talking about the oldest common here on this list, Dark Ritual. Turn one, you play this, you get three mana at the common level. Now this is of course going back to a time where rarity, a lot about the game was just unpolished. So something that gave you three mana on turn one wasn't really thought highly of like it is now. And Dark Ritual hasn't really changed that much in rarity. But again, it's like a lot of other cards on this list. You could totally see it as a rare. 
it sees play in the most competitive decks in whatever format you're able to play it in. Whenever you get off to that quick start, you're likely going to go off and eventually win the game. So, let me know what you think about this list. There's over 8,000 commons, so if I miss something, please don't get too upset with me. This was a difficult list to make. It required quite a bit of patience to look through each individual card here and try to do my best to rank them, I think, appropriately. So again, subscribe, like, comment, share if you enjoyed the video. Void here signing off. Have a wonderful day.